Good morning, folks. Today we're going to look at the sun and upcoming solar wind enhancements. We're going to hit a number of incredible science topics today as well. And we are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun was quiet, sunspots turning away, and it's a stark contrast to the days before with those filament eruptions. In 211 angstroms, we see the coronal holes, and these will amplify the solar wind in about three or four days. But with both coronal hole stream and that faint CME on the way, we'll have to have eyes open end of the week. Let's take a look at Noah's Enlil spiral because they have both potential impacts on there now. The first is the arrival of the coronal hole stream and it's followed by the small CME from the filament eruption. Now three out of four times we have this potential, the shock waves end up merging. Either way, we'll be watching for these solar wind enhancements from the 16th through the 18th. Let's start our science stories out at a hypothetical lunar colony. Did you know it's estimated to cost millions per brick to take to the moon? What do you do if you want to build something there? Well, just mix your blood with space dust and you're good to go. Who's volunteering? Super cool toe in the door here. Magnetic bacteria known to be in the human gut has been discovered along with its magnetite trails in the human brain and in the regions of the brain associated with navigation and orientation in the cerebellum and hippocampus. The first idea popping into my head here is how much more potential magnetosense humans could have with a better microbiome without overusing antibiotics, etc. Up next, hey, I know you, author of a number of important papers the last few years, and here we change a major paradigm in space weather and astrophysical plasmas. The broad solar energetic particle impacts with solar flares has always been considered like a reservoir where the boundaries help contain the plasma and maintain the stream limit. Instead, it's more like a gush of water down a plane, a flood, and sitting in the center is the interplanetary magnetic field, plays strongly in plasma physics and in solar terrestrial electromagnetic coupling. Another excellent aspect of that coupling comes with the X-rays of the solar flares. The enhancement of even the lowest ionospheric layers is quite impressive, and this is critical because when the D layer is modulated, it begins working the global electric circuit. This happens instantly with the flare absorption and can therefore begin two to three days before the CME arrives and causes geomagnetic unrest. Quick note here that is really for veteran observers who know the slow crawl of geology. The wind, water, and tectonics are punctuated by rapid catastrophic events. This paper here takes an incredible amount of blame off of those slow processes and dumps it on the grandest floods, erosions, and depositional events, the cataclysms, and even the smaller centennial and millennial events. They are dominating over the slow process through time. Now, last but not least, have you ever watched your opponent in a persuasive argument realize their position is flawed? You can see the look on their face. They stumble their words, stutter, and pause. This is the academic manuscript version of that. Folks, the incredible number of short-range and unexpected rotation glitches of the Earth, the slight dings to the length of a day, that are blamed on atmospheric and oceanic processes sometimes boggles the mind. This is even while it is known that most others are driven by geomagnetic jerks and strong solar storms. Here, they're developing an understanding of the problems with their calculation models when they're blaming the ocean. And while it's not impossible that surface patterns can work rotation speed, it is way overblown in the literature. And on top of this hint to that effect, you can easily go through the previous literature and see how between the geomagnetic jerks and the strongest solar storms, we have a plausible way to explain most of the non-seismic glitches in Earth's spin. By the way, this one is good, free to read, was published just last year, and is probably in my top 10 papers of the last decade list. We greatly appreciate your support. If you don't know about our plan for the future, check out ObserverRanch.com to see the future home of our Observer events. It's not just Jay-Z and random billionaires investing in RV camping. The prepping world figured out the genius of it the last decade as well. Hopefully we'll get to shake hands one day. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.